Hey guys, I just did a video uh, giving you a little teaser and showing you the big block, but I figured you guys might want to see a uh, little bit more up close and personal. So, just got it on the engine stand and um, I figured you guys might want to see it when I unwrap it. So this isn't like your normal everyday Chevy 454 big block. This one being a Buick has uh, some few differences. Some some things that make it a that I think make it a lot cooler. But you can see the Glyptol that we put down in there. And this is literally you paint it on and then you uh, throw it in the oven and you bake it. And what it's going to help do is it uh, helps wick the oil. So like uh, instead of bare metal, the oil kind of wants to stick to it and run and run with it, stay there. Um, but when you put this on this coating, it makes it like when I open this up, I can take a rag and I can wipe it and all the oil will come off and all the oil will drain back faster down to the oil pan. So it can pick up and get reused instead of sitting around all up in here. And um, if you look, there's the new cam, shiny cam bearings that we had put in. Oh, those are just beautiful. The first time I'm seeing this stuff too. Oh. Look at that. Hmm. I always wanted to go double check. You see, you can see his markings when he put them in. Right there on the face of the block and then right there in the bearing. And you got to make sure that this hole lines up. Because that's where your oil actually gets fed into and lubricates the bearing, lubricates the cam. If not, it'd just be uh, metal on metal and, you know, that's going to end up bad. So, one of the cool things about this engine is the oil pump is right here off the crank. So, it's uh, crank driven like um, all these these turbo motors that we have over here, all the new LS's and um, all the little four cylinders and everything. Every engine they're making nowadays has this setup that uh, the oil pump is actually running off the crank. So when you think about it, the higher you're revving, the faster the crank's going, the more oil you're getting pushed around the engine. So um, uh, that's what made it pretty interesting for me because this is a 1970 engine with, uh, hold on, let me. A 1970 engine with um, uh, 19, yeah, 1970 technology had this going that we use today and engines since then uh, weren't using this and apparently it's a way better setup because why would we be doing it today? Um, so always a good habit to do is uh, these are all torqued down to their spec and that's the way I'm going to store the engine. Um, one thing I don't like about this type of engine is a rope seal. You'll see when I put it on. I'll make a video of it. And uh, instead of having like a normal remain, it's like a rope that has like tar around it. I don't like it. I'm going to put it back in because that's the way it was stock. Let's flip this guy over. Let's try to do it one handed. So here's the glip tall again. Normally this would be all bare metal, but this is all the glip tall installation. And you know, you got to be real careful not to get it in there uh, where your hydraulic lifters go well not hydraulic but lifters go and like I said again all this is going to help do is help this oil go back down to get back into the oil pan so it can get recirculated um, instead of sticking around up here so I don't know. look at the honing uh, we could have did the hone ourselves here and we will for most of our engines but with this one being a, a kind of an important engine and kind of uh, exp expensive, this engine's worth a lot of money. Um, we were going to go ahead and uh, have the machine shop do it. We have, uh, I'm doing a video of uh, how to clean the pistons. And uh, we have all new Molly rings going in. Um, besides that, here, let's go get. Let's go get the front cover where I was telling you about the oil pump. So, like I said, the oil pump is ran off the crankshaft 
instead of like most old engines they have a little um, uh, a little rod that comes down off the camshaft that's probably about yay thin um, some of them are thinner than the other and they even have like little plastic pieces that connect them and then that's what spins your oil pump and that's what pumps your oil up but instead this one let's see, has this fancy dancy little aluminum cast aluminum cover that goes on the front of the engine let's see here like this they'll be sitting well sitting right on top of the front of the engine and your crankshaft right there where your crankshaft will be it's the inside of it your distributor comes down right here to this little hole when you look at it from top that's what you'll see and your distributor will be right here in front instead of like a Chevy engine where it'll be in the back um, but something that is kind of shitty about this kind of this kind of setup they didn't quite have it right in 1970 like um, all these engines over here you uh, can unbolt the oil pump and put a new one on but this one you uh, you have to rebuild it so there's gonna be two little gears in here two little pump gears that will spin around and that's what will draw the oil up and kick it out we'll kick it through the filter and then kick it up to the rest of the engine which I think is just really neat but I figured you guys would want to see what we're working with over here and if you don't believe me they're right there 455 GM which I think is awesome god that's pretty all right guys I just figured you guys would want a close-up of this engine and uh, give you a little heads up on what's gonna happen I'm excited I'm super excited about this uh, I'm ready to start work on it and I, I hope you guys uh, stick around and see what kind of power this thing's gonna make um, we'll get it all recorded I'll get all the assembly like I said assembly required um, and we'll even be there for first startup I'll bring you along the whole step of the way for now I'm gonna let you guys go you have a good day all right